Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use Ryzen Master. So if you didn't already know, we have an old guide that um, I felt as if it didn't cover everything. And since that was in 2017, three years later I am making a new guide. And this time uh, I am hoping to cover more information about all the different components you can adjust in Ryzen Master. And um, for this tutorial you're going to need obviously CPU-Z, if you um, don't already know about this tool, it will show you your processor clock, you can stress your um, components, your, your processor obviously, you can look at all your uh, latencies and your um, voltages and stuff, and so if you go ahead and um, open it, fun fact, the reason why you get this error is because you're not as an administrator. And so just go ahead and click and no, and you're going to want to type in CPU Z run as admin. And you're going to type in your admin password. It's going to open a new CPU uh, Z window. And it will show all your settings properly. And so next, you're going to need Ryzen Master. And um, it will automatically run as admin. And if you see here, right when you open it, you will get this error, me this uh, message that shows you that like um, this will be out of your warranty, and overclocking your processor can uh, break your motherboard. And it's really not a fun process if you don't know what you're doing. But once you get into overclocking, and understand it, it becomes easier and easier. And just just to know that if you follow this guide properly. You shouldn't really break your computer, and if you do, uh, I can't really take responsibility for that. So click OK, and um, here we have our current profile. So uh, right now, you can see that our peak speed is 3.9 gigahertz. Uh, obviously, this from, like changes from once uh, once in a while. That is because of AMD's cool and quiet function. And this function enables it to lower the voltage, if you look here, and it'll lower the clock speed so it could save more uh, power. And um, if you're truly uh, overclocking, then you might want to disable this, but obviously you don't really need to disable that for now. So um, this is your current profile. This, is sh this just shows what you're currently at. As you can see, uh, I've overclocked my APU from 1240 to 1600 because uh, I've seen that my APU doesn't really overclock well in Ryzen Master and I've gotten some issues with that and obviously I have um, chosen the best voltage here and for memory control I've overclocked from um, base to XMP to this and one thing I highly recommend you guys to do is right when you get your computer and you get everything set up, I want you guys to go into your BIOS and enable XMP. And this will uh, overclock automatically for your RAM. And as you can see, I've done some extra overclocking on that. Uh, we have a core disabled, core disabled as uh, zero. In addition to control, we have simultaneous multi-threading, which is good for certain like thread heavy tasks. And so, yeah. Uh, if you want to once you, when you're starting to overclock, you want the things that you want to focus on is your temperature, uh, your voltage, your speed, and also um, whether your computer crashes or not. Now keep in mind that if your computer does show you a blue screen or crash, then that's not necessarily fine, and uh, that that is necessarily fine. And depending on what happens to your computer, you know what to do. So let's say if my computer froze then I'd immediately know that I need a bit more voltage. And uh, if I put more voltage, if my temps go up, that means I have to reduce both my clock speed and my voltage. And let's say if it's just working fine, but it just keep the temp temps just go keep, they just keep going up, that means you need to reduce your voltage. And um, in turn, that'll give less watts out. And heat is, um, you can, like the watts given out is also like how much heat is given out. So the more, when you overclock, you're giving out more watts than what your computer's rated for. Now, uh, as long as you 
doing overclocking doesn't really uh, fry your motherboard, and over time, as long as you keep your CPU voltage at like a normal amount, then it shouldn't really cut off much time off your actual life of your processor. And if you're upgrading every five years, then this overclocking will certainly last you all five years if you're doing it right. And as you can see, our temps right now are at idling at about 57, but it's not actually idling because we both we have CPU-Z including uh, Streamlabs OBS on right now. So um, right now you can see that our clock is at 3600 and you can go ahead and verify this if we open up CPU-Z and it shows that the clock speed is about that. But when it spikes up, that's because OBS is using like CPU to keep the frames up since I am running at 50 frames. So um, you can see our voltage is 1.45 and obviously we can change that here and um, you can also see other settings there too out of all these and you can even bench uh, your CPU so, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to drop any frames and so here we're not going to be messing with memory because I recommend you guys just to turn XMP on your BIOS and just uncheck these when you're overclocking uh, and if you don't have an APU I'm not sure you see this but I would keep this off because I personally have gotten some pretty big issues with that. And additional control, make sure this is on at simultaneous multi-threading. And this is where it gets a bit trickier. Uh, for your voltage control, you want to know what um, your processor runs best at. And so right now, I see that I'm getting this temperature at this voltage. And so let's say if I was overclocking them something like 3.85 gigahertz, and I know that maybe I'd have to um, keep my voltage at about 1.41 or something as such. And so after doing this with cores disabled at zero, if I click apply, then it'll say creator mode apply success. If I go back into CPU Z and go to CPU, you can see that we have our core voltage matching um, pretty much what our voltage is here. Obviously, it doesn't just automatically change. And uh, we have our core speed locked at what we have here. Now, if this is giving you uh, like a reading like this, then all you pretty much need to do is turn off your, like, close this and reopen it and refresh it. But as you can see, it's giving us an accurate result of what we've overclocked to. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you want to overclock your RAM, then you're going to have to enable your memory control and your memory voltage control really depends on whether uh, what kind of die you have on your chip and a die is pretty much like what what manufacturer made your uh, actual chip and so we tend to see that Samsung works better with the Ryzen and it, uh, Samsung like there are different voltage settings for each die and so I have ballistic sports RAM, so that is a micron, and so it's kind of harder to overclock. But if you're overclocking your memory, then keep in mind that the latencies aren't as important as your actual clock. And if you want to do some overclocking, then you'd have to, I'd recommend you push this, and if it gives you blue screen, then reduce these and loosen the timings. Now, obviously, for these timings, you're going to want to do more research and know all your uh, like basic timings for this. As you can see, our cache latency and all of these are these numbers you see here. But you, it's really about uh, doing the right research and reaching out to people if you need any help. If you need any help, then go ahead in the comments and uh, drop a question, and I will see to that question if I'm able to answer it. And other than that. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more posts like this. And uh, thanks for watching.